Hey guys, Alexa Ray here, and today we're invading Rush Freshdick's apartment to give you a look at the UI for the Xbox One. Okay, so when you first sign in, this is what you see. This is the dashboard for the Xbox One. It's kind of similar to the Xbox 360, but it's a lot more cleaned up and there's a lot less clutter. You've got your avatar and your gamer score and all that stuff. And then you have a set of applications that you've last used, but these over here are always here. You've got the insert disc, the apps and games menu, and then snap, and we'll get into snap in a bit. Over here on the left, uh, if you have applications that you really like or use frequently, you can pin them. So you'll have easy access to them and they'll be right there. The store is divided into games and it actually has its own little section for add-ons here. So for like DLC and whatnot, it'll also recommend games for you based on what's popular and then based on what you've played or maybe what all of your friends are playing. Right now, obviously the choices are very limited. There's also separate sections in the store for movies and TV shows, music and apps for all of your, your streaming TV needs. Even though the Xbox One does play Blu-ray discs, you do have to download a dedicated app in order to have that functionality. But don't worry, it's free. One of the things that has really changed dramatically from the Xbox 360 is now there's sort of more of a Facebooky like social aspect to your, um, your friends list. Previously on the Xbox 360, you just sort of had everyone in a line and what they were playing, but now you have this feed, very similar to Facebook, that shows you know what people are doing, how long ago they did it, and what achievements they've unlocked, what they're playing, all that stuff. I like this a lot better than the way that this was done in the Xbox 360 because everything was just sort of in a line and you had the username and whatever their message was and whether or not they were online or offline. This one is a little more cleaned up and it's a little easier on the eyes and a little easier to navigate. One of the things that I'm really excited about with the Xbox One is the Skype functionality. Um, it's very easy to call anyone right from the dashboard of your console. I think I'm going to give Deputy Reviews editor Phil Kohler a call and check in and see how baby Sammy's doing. So let's boot it up. This is next gen. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Uh, Sammy, how are you? <laughs> Hi. How are you guys? We're doing good. How are you? Good. Playing with the Xbox One. Oh, look at that! It automatically zoomed in. That's really oh my cool. God. Oh my God. That's terrifying. Is this is this your place? No, are this your place? this is Fresh Dick's place. I was gonna say it seems too nice to be your place. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, you're totally. That's not what I would imagined. You're totally, uh, totally correct. Um, not yes. enough Final Fantasy in here for me. Oh, man. Can I do the honors? Xbox, hang up. <laughs> that was awesome. So you can also watch TV on Xbox One. There's a dedicated app for it, and it runs directly through your cable box. So once you're in the app, you can use your regular remote to change the channels like you normally would. You can also access your DVR. You can also access the Xbox One's dedicated TV guide, the Xbox One Guide. And you can browse TV listings or, you know, look at the, your favorites or app channels like Redbox and Hulu and the NFL. Xbox One also has this neat feature called Snap. You can bring up a sidebar in any application and bring up another TV show or game DVR, start a party chat or Internet Explorer. So let's say I'm watching TV and I want to check out and see how the site's doing. So we can pull up Internet Explorer very clumsily. And there's our site. So I can read Polygon while I watch TV. Once you have Snap up and you're navigating within the Snap window, in order to get back into the main window, into the game or TV show that you're watching, you have to hit the guide button, back out, and then actually switch over to that screen. It's a little clumsy and a little uncomfortable. So obviously there's some problems and clumsiness with navigating the UI with the controller. Fortunately, you have the Kinect and you can navigate to pretty much anything with voice commands. Just like before, you say Xbox and then follow up with a secondary command like go home or play a game. Xbox, go to Internet Explorer. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Click on the next Uncharted. 
Navigating with in-apps is actually pretty easy and pretty intuitive. However, sometimes the whole thing will just go off the rails and it'll boot you out of the menu of in-app commands and back to the main Xbox commands, which makes it a little harder to get in and out of them using just voice controls. There's also a couple things that you can only do using Kinect controls, such as record the last 30 seconds of your gameplay. Xbox, record that. Beyond voice commands, the Kinect can also recognize a person as they walk into the room. I'm gonna force Russ to participate and come and sit down next to me and see if it says hi. And sure enough, pretty neat especially when you have multiple users on one console. Overall, the UI and the dashboard for the Xbox One are a lot easier to use than on the 360. It's a lot cleaner and a lot more compartmentalized. The Kinect is still a little clunky, but when it's working, boy does it work, and it's a lot easier to navigate using voice controls than it is with the controller. So stay tuned to Polygon for all of our Xbox One and PlayStation 4 coverage in the weeks to come. Until then, I'll miss you.